This is the Vespa GTS 300 Supersport. We've been riding this 23.8 brake horsepower HPE motor and it oozes style and class. We've been trying to figure out what it's good at, what it's bad at and what it's all about. So let's get into it. So this 5,950 pound scooter is part of the GTS Super 300 lineup. It's the most powerful scooter that Vespa produced and it's joined by the Super Tech and the Super 300. We've got the Super Sport 300 and it's got the carbon front a nice little seat, an LCD dash, and some different colorways. This one is an ambitious green. To me, it looks a bit like a snot yellow color. Not really the favorite on the lineup. There's also a white, orange, gray, which is stunning, and black option. As I say, 5,950 pounds. And it's that true Vespa styling with the Vespa price tag. You know what you're gonna get with these scooters. They're really good off the line and they're really fun to ride. First of all is the HPE motor. It's 23.8 brake horsepower and around about 26 newton meters of torque. And it's really easy to ride. You can jump on this and instantly, as we've found out riding this here at Bike Matters, you just start getting a little bit silly with it really because it just handles so nicely on the road. It, really chuck it into a corner and get a little bit silly try and get a little bit lean on when you get to the top end of the sort of power figures when you get to the end of the sort of rev range of the cvt transmission it does start to eke out on the power so you can get to 30 really nice and quick through that twist and go cvt the twist and go cvt transmission but you do also notice that when you get to like 60 it's quite a slog to get it up to 70 and then up above 70 if you're on the right roads which is not in the UK. The dash itself is LCD on this Super Sport. The Super Tech, it benefits from the TFT dash. You do pay a little bit extra for that, but this is the 5,950 pound middle of the range option, really. The LCD dash is okay, and you've got an analog speedometer at the top. My gripe with that speedometer is that the miles per hour figures are on the inside lower end and the dash actually, or the dial, actually covers where the miles per hour are. So you have to really look and know where the miles per hour bits are before you start really getting onto the speedy roads when you're first jumping on. Naturally, as soon as you're on the bike and you've ridden it for a few miles, you sort of understand the sort of speed and how it feels when you're riding along. So no concern there at all. You've got your fuel gauge on the left and you've got your engine heat on the right and all of the basic stuff that you'd ever want, really. You can connect your phone as well. It's not the full MIA connectivity system, but it has got the ability to connect to your phone with the Bluetooth, which is always a nice touch if you fancy doing that. But I would say it would be nicer for this to have a TFT dash, and a whole conversation can be had of whether all of these Vespa options, because there's the GTS 300 lineup, the GTS Super lineup, there's so many different variations of these, is there too many? I'm not too sure. But in any case, the LCD and analog dash works nicely and it even displays little welcome messages when you turn the bike on. It does take a minute to actually decide if it wants to turn on, but once it's there, it's fine. The scooter fires up and it's really nice and quiet. The motor itself is underneath you, of course, under the seat. And it doesn't really make too much of a noise. It's pretty quiet, I'd say. But it doesn't need to make noise. It's a scooter and in the inner city and town area where this thing thrives, it's bang on. You've got 12 inch wheels front and rear and they've got Michelin tires on there. Nice and grippy and as a general road sort of feel of the tire, they're really nice. I mean, they're stable at low speeds and the turning circle on this is incredible. And then even at higher speeds, when you start to get to like 60, 70, you can induce a bit of a speed wobble if you really want to, to see what it does. But it's happy just plodding along and just really cool, calm and collected, I'd say, when you're riding. You can definitely see how this is gonna to appeal to the European market where these are really popular, especially, you know, like Rome and Milan, where Vespa, of course, have their national heritage from. So a nice little style point as well is you've got a single-sided suspension fork at the front, which is really different. You don't often see that at all. So as you can see on the camera, right down the front there, the suspension is on one side with the brake there as well, and then you expose the rim on the other side. At the rear, you've got a twin shock setup and the similar sort of vibe there with the same 220 mil disc front and rear. You've got ABS and ASR as well, and a button to switch off the ASR, the traction control, if you really want to. Never really understand why you'd want to switch off the traction control on a scooter, because it doesn't seem very invasive whatsoever. One thing we did find quite interesting, quite amusing actually, is of course the brakes on the front, the levers. If you pull both brakes in, the scooter starts to do a little jig, a little dance. Both brake levers in. Vibrate. Find the valve. One, not bad. Two, not bad. One and two. <laughs> Yo.
No idea why this happens because you're not putting any throttle input in at all, but it just seems to dance a little bit. It's very bizarre, a bit of a quirk. In terms of scooter spec, you've got an under seat storage there that doesn't fit a full size helmet, which is in my mind, a little bit of a miss. You can fit, no doubt, an open face lid, but we don't have one here at Bike Matters. And in the promo and sort of press release stuff, Vespa say that you can fit two of their open face lids under the seat. But in any case, you can fit like your jacket, your gloves, the sort of essential items, maybe your rucksack and your security and your lock and stuff like that under the seat as well. And that'll all fit there nicely. When you do pop that seat open, you've also got the fuel tank there and it's an 8.5 litre tank. It was quite interesting when we did fill this one up because it started splashing about instantly so as if it was full. Then the fuel gauge on the LCD dash was going up and down. We filled it up, it said half, then we rode it a little bit, stopped it, started again, suddenly it's full. Stop it again, start it again, it's gone down one. It's just very variable. But in any case, they say that you can get around about 85 miles per gallon on this. Overall, that would mean you're gonna get just around 200 mile mark if you're taking it very sensibly. But in real world riding, you're not quite gonna get that. It's always a little bit less. So I'd say comfortably 150 miles between fill-ups. And if you're using this as a commuter scooter, that's gonna be perfect, really. You've also got a glove compartment, which will fit one glove, not two of my gloves. So maybe you have to put one in the glove compartment, one under the seat. You've also got a USB bit in there as well. And your phone does comfortably fit under the, well, in the glove box. So if you're charging your items, you can put that in there whilst you're riding away. And it does lock with the keyless ignition switch. So looking at some of the other scooter features here, I mean, the switch gear, in my opinion, is actually really nice. I mean, the build quality of the scooter in general is quite nice. I do find that when I sit on it, it makes a bit of a groan and a bit of a creak. And I'm a six foot three rider. So it might be that it's saying, you're too big, get off. <laughs> but I feel quite comfortable on it. The seat with its nice stitched leather, is very comfortable to sit on and you're happily sat away there. And if you were to ride a pillion, they've got a grab rail here to hold on to and be nice and firm and secure. And even the seat at the back is really nice and soft. So you can get on this and do a lovely little 50 mile commute to the beach and put your swimming trunks underneath because the, <laughs> the storage does get a little bit warm. So they might dry under there. Oh, and I will also throw in the seat height is 790 mil. So someone as short as Brett is gonna be able to jump on this and be absolutely fine. It's quite nice and narrow as well. The footboard's really nice, but can't quite put your feet out front in, in there. It's sort of tucked in. And if you're doing that, then the uh, bars are gonna hit your knees a bit. But for someone as short as Brett, he's gonna absolutely love it. And he does love a Vespa. So he's probably um, around the corner drooling over this right now. Back into the scooter bits, the switch gear, as I say, very nicely made. You've got all of the bits here in terms of a joystick, which is probably gonna be for the TFT dash. When you're navigating it, there's not really much to go left, right, up and down for. Elsewhere, indicator is really nice. It's actually got a push button to cancel the indicator, which is really quite a nice touch. You've got a lock button there. And of course you press the little dial switch gear to open the glove box. Switch gear in terms of the kill switch has a nice click to it as well. Nice and bright and visible. And underneath that, you've got the ASR button. So the traction control, quick press of that and it will turn off. So maybe you can do some skids if you really wanted to. And under that is of course the fire button. So if you're gonna use this as a commuter scooter, as it comes, there's no wind protection at all. You can dive into the accessories catalog to get yourself a big screen. And of course, naturally, that's really up to you. If you wanna ride a scooter with a screen on to get that wind protection, by all means do it. It's gonna be a lot nicer for you. Get a little cover on your legs, a little thermal cover, maybe a little top box to fit your full face helmet in. Of course, Vespa are gonna allow you to accessorize and add bits to this scooter to make it what you want. And that's always really nice. So we've come to quite a nice natural close for the Vespa GTS 300 Super Sport. Ultimately, I think it looks quite nice for a Vespa. I mean, it's not quite the color I'd go for, but I can see the purpose for this. Again, as a bigger rider, I've jumped on this and I didn't feel too big for it. Of course, I always feel a little bit big on some scooters, but this one's been actually really nice to ride about. Now, when you look at the price, 5,950 pounds as of filming, you start to wonder, it's quite a premium price tag. And of course, Vespa have always been quite a premium brand. My question to you would be, do you think that it's worth paying that extra premium for maybe a GTS 300 Super Sport over say maybe the Japanese rivals that do the same sort of scooters? They're a little bit cheaper than this. So would you go out and buy the Vespa for near enough 6,000 pounds? Or would you just save a bit of money and get more of a commuter scooter that just does the job with no bells and whistles? So I think that just about rounds up the Vespa GTS 300 Super Sport review. Thank you so much for watching. If you check out one of our other videos, we've got top 10s, we've got a Vespa T5 feature that Brett has done. Very interesting, watch that one. So click the link to give it a watch. Thanks so much for watching. Ciao from the Vespa and ciao from me. Goodbye.
Oh, and subscribe. Thanks.